can win. You can win. You can win as long as you keep your head to the sky. What a week it has been. But we have made it. We have made it. We have made it. Live from Los Angeles, you're listening to A More Perfect Union on KBLA Talk 1580. I'm Dr. Nicole Corte, your host and chief national political analyst for KBLA Talk 1580. I'm in touch until you be in touch. Be sure to follow me on all the platforms, X and Instagram and Facebook, all of them, even spill at Dr. Nicordelai. That's D-R-N-I-I-Q-U-A-R-T-E-L-A-I. Yep, every vowel but O. Thanks, Mom and Dad. Uh, but pro tip, if you just type in Dr. Nee, boom, bam, boom, I pop right on up. Uh, also, be sure to download the KBLA app to listen to us live or on demand or simply tell Alexa to play KBLA Talk 1580. Uh, utilize the open mic feature. The open mic feature on the app is fantastic because it's a feedback loop. It gives me a chance to hear from you. And so uh, please, uh, please, please, please utilize that function to record a voice memo, responding to something brilliant that maybe one of our guests had shared, or uh, it could be one of the headlines uh, that we shared with you today. Whatever it is, we want to hear from you. And so uh, be sure to do that. And last but not least, subscribe to a More Perfect Union podcast. That way you never, ever, ever miss an episode. So you can join us live. You can join the party live or you can join the party asynchronously by subscribing to the podcast, More Perfect Union. Um, Now it's time for your national news roundup. It's time for the good, bad and ugly headlines of the day. Uh, And, you know, the streets uh, and social media is talking a whole lot about this. Uh, Fonnie Willis can stay on the Georgia Trump election case. That's what the judge ruled uh, while the special prosecutor resigns. Uh, Yeah, a Georgia judge today sharply criticized Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis and said she must fire the special prosecutor she hired to oversee the sweeping election fraud case against former President Donald Trump or see her office lose control of the case. Atlanta-based Superior Court Judge Scott McAfee, in a much-awaited ruling, said Willis had created the, quote, significant appearance of impropriety that infects the current structure of the prosecution team by having a romantic relationship with a special prosecutor, Nathan Wade, who is supervising the case against Trump and 14 others for allegedly trying to overturn the results of the 2020 election in the state. Now, within hours, Wade hand-delivered his resignation letter to Willis, and she accepted it, effective immediately. In his resignation letter obtained by USA Today, Wade notes that McAfee ruled that the defendants seeking his and Willis' disqualification had, quotes, failed to meet their burden of proving an actual conflict of interest in the case. But he wrote, quotes, I am offering my resignation in the interest of democracy, in dedication, to the American public and to move this case forward as quickly as possible. And so uh, that's the news that everybody is talking about. Uh, Fonnie Willis will stay on that case, but Nathan Wade has delivered his resignation effective immediately. And so hopefully now we can uh, set this behind us and focus on the case at hand. Uh, It's a pretty serious allegation set of allegations that a former president uh, had uh, orchestrated an effort, allegedly, uh, to steal votes in Georgia. Uh, That's not normal. And we need to get back to talking about that uh, 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 lack of of normalcy and the attempt uh, to perhaps rinse and repeat. That's what we should be talking about. Moving along, from Georgia to New York, the New York Times is reporting the man who uh, shot another on a subway train unlikely to be charged, according to the DA. A 32-year-old man who shot a second man in the head during an altercation on a moving A train uh, just Thursday evening appears to have acted in self-defense and will not criminally will not be criminally charged for now. That's according to the Brooklyn District Attorney. The shooting, which followed a frightening chaotic confrontation on a crowded subway car during the evening rush hour left the second man, 36-year-old Dewan Robinson, in critical but stable condition. 
The gun he was shot with was one he brought onto the train and brandished during the altercation, according to police. Uh, Oren uh, Yanev, a spokesman for the district attorney, described the shooting as shocking and deeply upsetting. Can you imagine being on the A train in New York during rush hour? You know, somebody brandishes a gun. Not only do they brandish it, but they use it. You know, my goodness. Um, you know, this is an important part of the public safety conversation, right? Uh, and, you know, what rights people have when they're in closed spaces with other folks. Uh, and so we'll continue to keep our eye on this story um, as it develops. I was talking about the court ruling in Georgia earlier, but uh, take a listen to this this Supreme Court uh, headline uh, where they reject students' request to hold drag show while they challenge school bans. The Supreme Court of the United States today rejected an emergency request from students at West Texas A&M University that they be allowed to put on a charity drag show while they challenge the Texas Panhandle schools ban. The school's president canceled last year's show. You all might remember this. As a, uh, 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 and uh, uh, he said uh, of his responsibility, he did it because of his responsibility to foster a healthy campus culture and effective education environment. That's what the uh, school president said. College president Walter Windler said drag shows, quote, stereotype women in cartoon-like extremes for the amusement of others and discriminate against womanhood. Now, while the students are litigating that decision, they asked the court to rule that they could hold this year's planned show, and the justices denied the request without comment. In November, the Supreme Court denied a request by Florida officials to let the state enforce a law restricting drag shows. But Justice Brett Kavanaugh, in a statement partly joined by Justice Amy Coney Barrett, stressed that the court was not dealing with the First Amendment questions, but rather the more procedural issues of how the lower court handles the case. And so uh, we see uh, uh, very clearly that the Supreme Court uh, uh, doesn't appear to have an appetite uh, to uh, rule on cases related to these drag shows. And really, we're talking about free speech. Uh, and while we're speaking uh, about uh, free speech, uh, you know, this is not a typical headline uh, that we cover, but uh, it was something that in that spirit caught my attention. USA Today is reporting that millions are blocked from porn sites as free speech child safety debate rages across the United States. A, a high stakes battle over pornography, child safety and free speech is heating up across the nation with more than a half dozen states passing age verification laws aimed at halting minors from accessing Pornhub and other adult websites. Texas is among seven states to pass some form of the controversial legislation, which effectively blocks millions of adult video enthusiasts from entering Pornhub sites unless they can prove that they are at least 18 years old. Uh, and so, you know, this story is about more than just, you know, people's preferences around porn or access to porn. Uh, Notice how this child safety debate, this pornography debate, and free speech debate is being muddled together. And we got to think critically about who that benefits. Uh, and uh, uh, that's not the only thing uh, we have to think about. Uh, we have to think about uh, these faux uh, uh, laws against uh, being woke. Y'all know what I'm talking about? I know Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida knows what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, Governor Ron DeSantis' war on woke appears to be losing steam in Florida. So it's not just his presidential uh, aspirations that have lost steam, but apparently these woke laws are losing steam in Florida. Governor DeSantis' campaign against ideas he considers woke have run into some roadblocks. A court settlement this week blunted his Parental Rights and Education Act, a law that critics call don't say gay. And, earl and earlier this month, the federal court blocked another key measure that DeSantis introduced in 2021 and called the, that was called the Stop Woke Act. Y'all remember that? It marked the beginning of DeSantis' efforts to reshape how Floridians view and teach issues involving race and gender identity. Uh, and, and I'm so glad that uh, we have our very special guests, 
uh, Dr. Mitchell, professor of American literature over at uh, Boston. University. At Boston for University, uh -huh. Boston University for the year, but uh, also connected to Ohio State University. Uh, we're going to uh, engage with her to help us sort of make sense out of this um, and more. Uh, you, By the time you finish this episode, by the time you finish listening to this episode, you're going to know who Harry Jacobs is. And you're going to know uh, about uh, a really cool stamp, a really cool stamp series that is about to become available and more. Dr. Mitchell is with us live in studio. When we come forward, you're listening to a more perfect union on KBLA Talk 1580. A safe place to go loud, loud, loud. A great place for progressive politics. KBLA Talk 1580. 1580. I have a secret. Uh -huh. I use secret whole body deodorant because more than just my armpits stink. Uh -huh. Can I use it where my bra rubs under my... Oh, <laughs> yeah. And what about down there? You know, my... Totally. Four out of five gynecologists would recommend it. So I tried it, and now I get 72 hours of freshness. freshness. From my pits to my... Ooh, I love that it's a spray. Me too. And it comes in sticks and creams too. Go get your secret whole body deodorant. On your period, sudden gushes happen without warning. But now, you can say goodbye to stand-up gush fears. Thanks to Always Ultra Thins with Rapid Dry technology. It absorbs gushes two times faster than the leading store brand and gives you up to 100% leak-free protection. Hello clean and comfortable with Always Fear No Gush. This is KBLA Talk 1580, where hate loses and love wins. You're listening to A More Perfect Union on KBLA Talk 1580. I'm Dr. Nicordelai Corte, and so delighted to welcome another professor here, uh, Dr. Caritha Mitchell, professor of American literature at Ohio State University. Uh, but this term, she's over at On Loan. <laughs> at Boston University. I'm sure the people at Ohio State would appreciate me mentioning, mentioning that. Uh, and uh, uh, you are here to orient us uh, to the history of Harriet Jacobs. Uh, but even more than that, uh, the United States Postal Service has approved an upcoming stamp series. Tell us about that. Yes, it's really exciting. Um, the Underground Railroad is being honored with 10 heroes of the Underground Railroad, and Harriet Jacobs is one of those 10. Frederick Douglass is in the mix, uh, and Harriet Tubman is in the mix, and there are other um, white abolitionists who are in the mix. But I was absolutely delighted to see Harriet Jacobs included, and I felt that her inclusion really shone a light on the fact that it being 10 people featured goes in line with what we learn from Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl, which is her autobiography, which was published in 1861. And so I was struck by the fact that she told her story of finding liberation in a way that really highlighted the collaboration that was needed, even collaboration from other people who were actually enslaving people. So white women who were enslavers themselves helped her escape, helped her hide. And so the fact that when the U.S. Postal Service approved this stamp series, that it was 10 people, to my mind, that was an opportunity to really honor the way that Jacobs was always collaborative and communal in her approach. Oh, my goodness. I mean, there's so many lessons here that are so timely. You know, I mean, when we read through the headlines today, sometimes we forget that a lot of these issues are cyclical, right? Uh, and when it comes to being seen, mm -hmm. when it comes to uh, being seen in, in the fullness of our humanity, mm -hmm. uh, the fact of the matter is this has been, you know, the story of our existence. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And and there are stories like that of Harriet Jacobs, where there are no, there have been a number of people along that journey uh, who even make her story possible. Yes. And I feel like that's part of what we learn. Right. Is that 
even though things continue to be horrible, I, I would argue always that decency is not an American inheritance. It takes deliberate effort. And we're living in a time that brings that very much in our face, right? Decency is not to be taken for granted right now. But the fact that, so actually the stamps became available last Saturday. Oh, wonderful. Exactly. And so the fact that the stamps included a range of people, for me, was a way of reminding us that there have always been people who have fought for decency in the midst of a nation that has been built on indecency and violence. And just because we're seeing a lot of indecency and violence right now doesn't mean that we should have any less investment in pushing toward decency. Like, we have to stay in the fight in the same way that these people in the Underground Railroad stamp series did. So I like the reminder that there was always cross-racial um, struggle. There was always recognition around uh, across differences that people deserve to have rights. And so I actually wrote a piece for MSNBC about the stamp series coming out and highlighting the communal nature. Because of course, to your point, the fact that we have people who are banning books right now, the fact that we are living in a post Roe v. Wade reality, the fact that younger women have fewer rights than I did, like we are in that moment. So this is a reminder that across differences of every kind, we have to keep struggling for decency. And what do you, what would you say is a part of the the secret sauce uh, that allows for that hope to burn eternally? Right, that hope that we all have to tap in that reservoir of hope when we are reading through the headlines and and you know we see that you know. Uh, you know, this person is now the nominee of, you know, a major political party in our country or, you know, some of the wild things that we see on our on our social media from day to day. You know, uh, talk to us about what gave Harriet Jacobs hope uh, and what gave, you know, uh, these uh, hidden and not at all hidden figures uh, that are part of the stamp series. What gave them hope that that we might uh, learn from today? Thank you for that. Um, well, I guess I should say a little bit about Harriet Jacobs mm -hmm. herself, right? So Harriet Jacobs was born in 1813 in um, Edenton, North Carolina. And basically, because she took it upon herself to write her life story and publish it in 1861, we have a sense of not only what she went through, but how she decided to describe it. And so to your point about how we connect to hope, I take a lot of hope from the way that she decided to tell the story. The fact that she um, talked about the fact that her love for black men and their love for her was part of how she sustained her sanity. So for example, part of what we learn is that she hides for six years and 11 months in a crawl space above her grandmother's um, storage shed. And part of how we know that she maintained her sanity is because she highlights the fact that her uncle, for example, was a carpenter. And not only did he make the crawl space, but he left a little gimlet that allowed her to poke a hole that she got to be one inch. Hmm. One inch hole that she used to look out on her children hmm. so that she could stay sane. And she shows us that that is from a love and connection that she had to the black men in her life, to her children, to her grandmother. So I would say that being deliberate about staying connected in community is one of the lessons that we learn from Harriet Jacobs. The other thing I would say is that we have to be deliberate about not only thinking, because we're humans, we are going to think, not only thinking, but thinking about our thinking. That is one of the privileges we have as human beings. So for me, what I take as a strategy for maintaining hope to struggle is to be deliberate about what are the things that I'm paying attention to. Everything in the society, you make sure that I'm going to be bombarded with the ugly. How am I deliberately seeking out that which is inspiring? And part of it is paying attention to people like Harriet Jacobs and the people she has inspired that are among us today. Well, when we come forward, uh, we are uh, talking with Dr. Mitchell uh, about this and so much more, there's a term that she coined called know your, know your place aggression. And this term, know your place aggression, uh, has shaped public conversations and academic discourse. We're going to ask her what that term means and uh, how it might inform 
how we think about the news that we consume. And for you change makers on the front lines, the news that you're making each and every day. You're listening to a more perfect union on KBLA Talk 1580. More when we come forward. The station you turn to when you've had it up to here with cultural incompetence. KBLA Talk 1580. I'm Tyreek Wynn. The latest on the black. I'm Tyreek Mason. Allison. Former CNN news anchor Don Lemon. Former press news line Musk in a new press interview. Lemon was in a new press CNN Wednesday to bring a new recent interview. Wednesday with a new Lemon talking to Musk about how a talk between them for Lemon and talk between one ex <laughs> This is the KBLA Sports Minute with Ray Richardson. Ray Richardson. I'm a bad man. The season is over for the men's basketball teams at USC and UCLA. Both teams lost Thursday in the quarterfinals of the Pac-12 tournament in Vegas, and both teams ended the season under 500. Oregon held on to beat UCLA by two. USC lost by 21 to Arizona. Bronny James had three points off the bench in 22 minutes. USC ended up 15 and 18 overall. UCLA was 16 and 17. Neither team is worthy of an at-large bid to the NCAA tournament, and both will unlikely get a call from the NIT. The Clippers earned their 20th road win of the season. They rolled into Chicago and beat the Bulls by 15. Nice game for Bones Highland, who started in place of James Harden. Harden sat out Thursday's game with a shoulder injury. Highland had career highs of 17 points and 11 assists. The Lakers are off until Saturday night against Golden State. No debates, no speculation, just the info you need. That's your KBLA Sports Minute. I'm Ray Richardson on KBLA Talk 1580. This is KBLA Talk 1580. Talk radio. That's music to your ears. Ears. We're unapologetically progressive. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. Race, culture wars, political turf battles, criminal justice and injustice, the courts. These are the conversations you won't hear elsewhere. My guests are leading journalists, celebrities and sports figures, elected leaders and influencers. They aren't afraid to get into it and say the quiet part out loud. With Ariva Martin in real time, your commute just became the most engaging part of your day. Tune in weekdays from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. or find us on YouTube. Ariva Martin in real time. When you want it straight, no chaser. Unapologetically progressive. KBLA Talk 151880. We've got your black. black. <laughs> KBLA Talk 1580 is the fastest growing talk radio station in Southern California. Home to 50,000 watts and an audience reach of 12 million listeners. KBLA Talk 1580 is a pioneer for black audio content, including our groundbreaking $2 million climate justice campaign and the most loyal influential audience. According to an independent research study by the polling firm of Iteris, for the second consecutive year, KBLA Talk 1580 is the most trustworthy, reliable, and credible news source for black audiences and beyond in Southern California. Let KBLA Talk 1580 power your advertising dollars. Our omni-channel custom marketing solutions are specifically tailored to connect with your ideal target audience. We leverage audio, podcasts, streaming, digital, social media, and local activations to get your message out to the black community. Get in touch with our advertising team today at Advertising at kbla1580.com that's advertising at kbla1580.com kbla1580 we've got your black it's game day at jim's house and the spread is impressive mike's already done some damage with the hot wings and now he's dropping back and going deep for another slice of pizza i sure hope he brought the pepto mike knows the pepto bismol provides fast five symptom relief from unexpected stomach upsets he's no rookie <laughs> the way he's throwing back those nachos he's the goat be ready for game day with pepto bismol when you have nausea heartburn indigestion upset stomach diarrhea 
Service as directed. Keep out of reach of children. Hey, what are you doing up on the step stool? About to clean these light fixtures. The whole family's coming over. And if there's even a speck of dust in the house, my abuela will find it. Here, I got a Swiffer duster to help with that. A Swiffer what? A Swiffer duster. It has this cool extendable handle that reaches six feet to get high and low with fluffy dusters that easily trap and lock dust. So no more step stool? No more step stool. Easily trap and lock dust from hard to reach places with the Swiffer Duster. Love it or your money back. eBay Motors is here for the ride. 120,000 miles of night drives, daily commutes, and who knows how many. Are we there yet? Through countless fixes, elbow grease, and a new radiator, you kept your ride alive. With eBay Motors, you have over 122 million parts to keep it running. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they'll be the perfect fit every time. Plus, at these prices, well, we're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. If you're looking for the most epic place on Earth, let's start at the base of a massive waterfall. Then trek through the thick jungle. Then climb to the peak of a snowy mountaintop. Then once you get there, keep going. Because with intelligent 4x4 and 7 drive modes and a Nissan Pathfinder, the search is the real adventure. Available feature. Intelligent 4x4 cannot prevent collisions or provide enhanced traction in all conditions. Always monitor traffic and weather conditions. We're with Bridget, whose husband won't be home for months, and whose daughter is due any day. We're with Mike, who's leaving home to protect his family and yours. We're with all service members and their families who need community, connection, and maybe a bit of magic. Are you with them? Learn more at USO.org today. Find a righteous range and don't be afraid to say what you see. For KBLA Talk 1580. You're listening to A More Perfect Union on KBLA Talk 1580. I'm Dr. Nicordelai Corte and just really enjoying the conversation with Dr. Caritha Mitchell, professor of American literature at The Ohio State University, on loan to Boston University <laughs> this term. Uh, she is... Uh, uh, author uh, of Incidents in the Sl- in the Life of a Slave Girl by Harriet Jacobs. She edited that book, rather. Um, and that is available wherever books are sold. Yes. Uh, and what's so cool about it is not only can you enjoy the book, but you can enjoy the stamp as well because the United States Postal Service has already approved an upcoming, um, well, it's not upcoming because it's already out, the Underground Railroad Stamp Series, which includes... Harriet Jacobs. Absolutely. It's available now. Mine arrived when I was getting on the plane. Mine arrived at my house. <laughs> oh, wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. And it's so interesting because when, when Robert Battles, our, our show producer, when we were um, talking about having you, and he said Harriet Jacobs, I said, oh, you mean Harriet Tubman? Mm. <laughs> and he said, no, no, no. I mean Harriet Jacobs, right? Mm-hmm. And so it was an education for me, and I'm sure for a lot of folks who are listening, you know, that aren't as familiar with Harriet Jacobs, yes. who may indeed be a hidden figure yes. uh, to a lot of folks. I appreciate your putting it that way because part of what I emphasize in my editing of Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl, the introduction that I wrote for the edition, I emphasize the fact that most of us will know the name and face of Frederick Douglass. Mm-hmm. And if we at all know any of his contemporaries, we think Harriet Tubman or we think Sojourner Truth. Mm-hmm. Will you not think Harriet Jacobs? And part of what I find striking is that, you know, Douglas in 1845 writes his narrative in the life of Frederick Douglass written by himself, which, of course, is important because the country did so much to outlaw learning how to read and write in English among enslaved people. So he makes the point written by himself. Now, Sojourner Truth, Harriet Tubman, they were in demand orators of the 19th century, just like Frederick Douglass was. So there was some interest in their life stories while they were alive, but they did as told by biographies, right? They were not literate. They were they were telling their story to someone who wrote it for them. It is Harriet Jacobs who becomes the first formerly enslaved African-American woman who tells her story for herself. And she has that written by herself line, just like Douglas says. So it's important that you bring that up because that's part of what I find so striking about Harriet. 
Harriet Jacobs, is that she helps us understand. And she basically says, you know what, slavery is terrible for men, but it is even more terrible for women because they have peculiar things that they deal with. And so part of what that means we have to contend with is, okay, what is she saying about the fact that surviving slavery in a body that can be impregnated, Mm -hmm. surviving that is no joke. To survive it and write beautifully about it is a whole nother level, and that is what she achieved. She achieved not only surviving it, but then writing her story for herself. So it's an absolutely amazing piece of literature that changed the landscape, honestly. And so to have her featured in that stamp series is more than appropriate. I mean, just as as I, I hear you, you know, make those points and steep us in that history. I can't help but think about barrier breaking people like Pauli Murray, mm-hmm. you know, who before we had a concept of intersectionality, yes. you know, she writes about, talks about, applies this concept of indivisibility, mm-hmm. right? There's not a point by which, you know, your racial identity ends and your, your sexual orientation or sexual identity or gender, mm-hmm. you know, begins, right? Uh, and, and so... Uh, talk to us a little bit about this term that you, you coined. It's called know your place aggression. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and know whose place? Know your place <laughs> aggression. I have a sense of, of, of what this might be, but but school us. What, 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 what exactly does this term mean? Yes. So um, know your place aggression. I define it as the flexible, dynamic array of forces that answer the achievements of marginalized groups such that their success brings aggression as often as praise. And we're all familiar with it, that the more you succeed, the more someone wants to remind you, oh, you just got that because or, Mm. oh, affirmative action this. Ignoring the fact that affirmative action in this country has always been for straight white men because affirmative action is these are some resources. I'm going to set them aside for you. What is American history if it's not that for straight white men? Mm -hmm. So the fact that any time you're achieving that the most American thing to do is to say or do something that reminds you that we don't really think you fully belong. We don't really think you actually earned that to remind you of that is the American way. So know your place aggression is my way. I'm a literature professor, right? And so what that means is that I care about literature, but I also care about discourses and practices, words and deeds. What is most commonly said and done? And when you pay attention to what is most commonly said and done in a space, then you know the culture of that space. Mm-hmm. Whether it's a classroom space, uh, the state, the space of a state, a culture of a state or a national culture, Whatever is most commonly said and done gives you that. So know your place aggression is the way that I help people pay attention to what is most commonly said and done. And when you pay attention, you notice how it is usually to put those who are not straight white men back in their proper place. Now, of course, the fact that you've mentioned Polly Murray, of course, she also coined the term Jane Crow, right. right? It's not just Jim Crow, it's Jane That's Crow. Right. And so this really um, sharp analysis that allows us to think about all the different ways that people have tools to remind you of your proper place. Depending upon who you are, they have a lot of tools. So for me, part of what Jacobs does is very much in line with what Polly Murray does, right? She says, I know that my brothers are struggling, and I'm going to tell you that it's my love for my brothers that help keep me sane. But even with that, I'm going to acknowledge the ways that the fact that I'm in a body that can be impregnated is making a whole different experience for me in this brutal system of slavery. That's right. That's right. That's right. I mean, just even as you share that, I'm, I'm, you know, know your place aggression. I'm thinking about so many examples of, of where I've experienced that, where I'm sure so many of our leaders, learners, and listeners have also experienced that. I remember, uh, being in high school, my senior year, in the parking lot and uh, someone who I thought was a good friend had approached me and uh, said, you know, Hey, I heard you got into the university of Southern California. Is that true? And I said, yeah, it's true. I just got the letter yesterday. I'm really excited. I think it's where I'm going to go. And this overachiever friend of mine who, uh, uh, you know, was a young woman 
you know, half white, half Japanese, uh, then said to me, well, I guess if I were black, if I could check black on a box on an application, I guess I would get into USC too. Mm-hmm. Now, we stopped being friends after that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was shocked and really wounded by it because mm-hmm. this was, you know, somebody that I had known. We were friends. You know, I'd been to her home. I knew her brothers. Was a camp counselor with one of her brothers for two summers. Like, we knew each other, mm-hmm. right, beyond uh, the surface, so I thought, mm-hmm. right? But that would be an application oh, that's of a know perfect, your place aggression. It's a perfect example. And let me just say that it's a perfect example, too, because it highlights why I care about discourses and practices. I don't care about trying to claim that I know somebody's intention. I'm not interested in psychologizing. What I'm saying is because we are all socialized in this American society, what is most commonly said and done is something akin to that. So the fact that the example that you give us is someone who also would be considered a person of color is a a reminder that what is most commonly said and done, we can absorb that. And I want us to be on guard, not only think, but think about your thinking. Think about the way that everything you've been taught in American society would make that response a very typical response. To say something different is actually not typical in the American culture. So that's what I want us to recognize is that we're all bombarded with these discourses courses and practices that will make these um, attempts to put other marginalized people in their proper place. I want us to be aware of that, not only because we don't want to do it to each other, but also so that we don't internalize when white people do it to us. Mm -hmm. Because again, it's the most commonly said and done thing. And if you internalize it, then you start thinking, well, if I had behaved differently, then maybe this wouldn't have happened. But what I'm tracing is no, it is your success that is going to bring those kinds of ugly things to your doorstep. So you don't have to second guess and think I should have been nicer Mm -hmm. and whatever. You don't have to second guess that. You can just be like, ah, there's that very American way of thinking and talking and doing. That's right. That's right. I want to remind everybody to go out and get this book. It's Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl by Harriet Jacobs, edited by Caritha Mitchell. Uh, It is uh, an important read. It is, uh, I think, uh, the next most important book I need to add to my collection. Thank you. Uh, you know, we are well versed in Frederick Douglass and Harriet Tubman and Sojourner Truth and uh, a number of abolitionists uh, during the time. Uh, but we may not know as much about uh, Harriet Jacobs, who was a hidden figure to me and maybe a hidden figure to you. Um, we want to keep Dr. Mitchell with us uh, to get her reaction to Oprah Winfrey's uh, soul stirring Glad Media Award uh, acceptance speech just from last night. Uh, the streets and social media are talking a whole lot about it. We'll get her reaction to that and more when we come forward. You're listening to A More Perfect Union on KBLA Talk 1580. Say the quiet part out loud. loud. KBLA Talk 1580. So you just used bug spray in your home. Now what? Well, between the waiting and waiting for things to dry up and keeping your family away from the mess, it hits you. You could have used Zevo. Unlike other bug sprays that stick around, Zevo goes from kill to clean in seconds. Plus, it's safe for use around people and pets when used as directed. Zevo, people friendly, bug deadly. Eggs are a staple in our diets, and there's only one egg with more delicious farm fresh taste plus superior nutrition. Eggland's best. With more vitamins, including six times more vitamin D and 10 times more vitamin E, plus 25% less saturated fat than ordinary eggs. Available in so many delicious varieties. Classic, cage-free, and organic. Eggland's best. Better taste, better nutrition, better eggs. Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by AbbVie. 
Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle, unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies candidates with the right skills, sends you great matches, then you can easily invite them to apply. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. See for yourself. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash free to try ZipRecruiter for free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Hey, Californians, are you ready to make your home ownership dreams come true? The California Dream for All Shared Appreciation Loan Program might be for you. First-generation home buyers can get down payment and closing cost assistance along with a first mortgage to help you unlock the door of your new home. Applications open in April, so talk to an approved lender to see if you're eligible. Find out more at calhfa.ca.gov forward slash dream or call 877-922-5432 a message from the california housing finance agency are you wet shaven you'll get razor bumps nah pops i'm good with gillette skin guard how long you been growing that beard mama hates anyway <laughs> since 77 i shaved and got ingrown so bad that's why i use the gillette skin guard razor face scrub shave gel and moisturizer so i don't have to worry about new razor bumps or shaving irritation gillette skin guard huh <laughs> your mama's gonna love this one <laughs> <laughs> the best a man can get keeps getting better with gillette skin guard buy now at a retailer near you this is KBLA Talk 1580, where everybody is somebody and nobody is a stranger. You belong here. You're listening to A More Perfect Union on KBLA Talk 1580. The queen of talk is all the talk. Uh, following her acceptance speech last night at the GLAAD Media Awards, Oprah Winfrey was uh, acknowledged with the Vanguard Award. And just to give you a sense of some of the other folks who won the Vanguard Award in recent years, people like Kerry Washington, people like Jay-Z and Beyonce have won the Vanguard uh, Award that goes to allies who are using their platform, using their lives uh, to uh, advance the respect and dignity, quite frankly, of our fellow uh, LGBTQ neighbors, friends, family members, our fellow Americans. Uh, and so uh, I want you to take a listen to this very uh, moving part, I thought, of Oprah's acceptance speech. And uh, we'll get uh, Dr. Mitchell's reaction on the other side. Let's just take a moment and acknowledge every person in this room, every one of you in this space for being who you are for standing in the truth of who you are, because it's a beautiful thing to witness and an even more beautiful thing to be a part of. I have to say that many people don't know this, but 35 years ago, my brother Jeffrey Lee passed away when he was just 29 years old from AIDS. Growing up at the time, we did, in the community that we did, we didn't have the language to understand or to speak about sexuality and gender in the way that we do now. And at the time, I really didn't know how deeply my brother internalized the shame that he felt about being gay. I wish he could have lived to have witnessed these liberated times and to be here with me tonight. All the years, all the years, of the Oprah show for me were about sharing stories that actually helped people be more of their authentic selves. And I know that that is the truest form of what it means to be free, to have personal freedom. Personal freedom, to have personal freedom. Uh, that was just a portion of last night's uh, acceptance speech from Oprah Winfrey at uh, the GLAAD Media Awards. Uh, Dr. Mitchell, uh, what's your reaction to that? Wow, that's powerful. That was my first time hearing it. What I love about it is this insistence upon linking this to telling stories because that resonates for me because I understand that human beings make the meaning of our lives with the stories we tell. And so it feels 
powerful to me to know that her investment in sharing those stories to give other people possibility, I imagine must be giving her some comfort in this moment too, to realize that she was making that room even as she wasn't necessarily speaking the truth about him in all of those years that she was doing that work, that still she was trying to help make the space in the society where he would have been able to enjoy those things. So I imagine that's got to be comforting for her. I mean, the other thing that it makes me think about is how powerfully we have to start to understand as Americans that um, the dominant categories that we have, meaning straight, for example, cisgender, All of those dominant categories are not simply some kind of norm. They are a violent norming process. They deliberately have us think that humanity comes in a very narrow package, that if I'm going to see you as fully human, I need to be able to see you as straight. If I'm going to see you as a citizen whose rights I should respect, I need to see you as straight. That is one of the ways that our socialization has narrowed our idea about humanity. And that's what I want us to get get better at recognizing is happening. It's not simply, am I bashing a gay person? Am I bashing a trans person? No. What are the ways that I'm not even checking for how my acceptance of being, you know, normatively um, seen as straight? How is that acceptance actually something that is a limiting belief on me and on others. It's a violent process. It's a very violent process. And that's also part of the reason why we need more allies to step forward, to step out, to stand tall, you know, uh, you know, and lock arms Mm -hmm. and lock arms. You know, the, the folks that come for us because of our gender, because of our race, because of our sexual orientation, because of our immigration status, Mm -hmm. we can go on and on. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, you know, chances are if they're coming from one of us, they're coming for all of us, Mm -hmm. right? And one of the most powerful things we can do is affirm one another. Absolutely. Is to see each other in our fullness um, and not see the characteristics that make us who we are as some evidence of brokenness, Mm -hmm. right? But uh, as evidence of the uniqueness that we all bring to our families and to our communities. And so... Uh, Again, congratulations to Oprah Winfrey. Very well-deserved. GLAAD Vanguard uh, Media Award. Uh, And uh, the great thing about it is she's going to continue the work. Absolutely. And, you know, the other thing that you're making me think about is, you know, as you link it to the Know Your Place aggression, if we think about the various ways that if we are in marginalized groups, we can be reminded of our proper place. If we can think about that for our own experiences, then let's use that to look out and say, okay, wait a second, as LGBT communities have gained more and more victories for their recognition as citizens, they seem to be getting more pushback, more reminders of their proper place. We can see that as parallel to the things that we're going through. So as you say, you're change makers, like that is what the change makers have to be able to see so that we hold on to the hope to keep the struggle to make this a more decent space for everyone. That's right. That's right. Well, let me finish with this. NBC News is reporting that the American Society of Magical Negroes cast And directors say not to judge the film by its trailer. A social media backlash was not the response of the writer and director, uh, Kobe Leiby. And his cast expected when the trailer uh, first debuted, uh, the feature film, The American Society of Magical Negroes, which dropped back in December. Uh, Perhaps false assumptions. Best sum up some of the response as... In the case of one viewer who said they expected a black Harry Potter adaptation and felt blindsided. Can you imagine that? Uh, Libby's film is instead a satire examining the magical Negro trope, a term Spike Lee is credited with coming with coining decades ago uh, to call out Hollywood's tendency to spotlight black characters in supporting roles that cater to white main characters. And so. Uh, uh, until recently, black satirical films were a relatively uh, a rare uh, uh, occurrence that we saw on Hollywood's biggest screen. Uh, with writer and director Cord Jefferson grabbing an Oscar win, hey Cord, for best screenplay adaptation for American fiction, that may change. In that regard, the American Society of Magical Negroes 
might be right on time. And uh, while we are short on time, I want to encourage folks to check out that film. And, you know, this weekend is the NAACP Image Awards. And so uh, be sure to tune into that on the CBS platforms. I'll be there. Uh, and uh, you better believe we're going to give you the full scoop on Monday. Uh, with that, I, I want to thank uh, our incredible guest, uh, and I can't wait to have her back again, Dr. Caritha Mitchell, Professor of American Literature at The Ohio State University on loan at Boston University. Make sure to get Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl by Harriet Jacobs, edited by Caritha Mitchell. Uh, thank you so much for being thank with us. Thank you. What a pleasure. Absolutely. And big thanks to The Village that helps us to produce a more perfect union each and every day. Our executive producer, Tavis Smiley. Our sound engineer extraordinaire for the day, Kamal White. Hey, Kamal. Uh, also, our show producer, uh, Robert Battles. And uh, uh, our uh, lovely social media guru. Um, uh, our social media guru. Uh, Malika. Malika. Uh, thank you. And uh, to each and every one of you, all of our leaders, learners, and listeners, we love you. We couldn't do this show and wouldn't do this show without you. Remember, don't panic. Organize. Do what you can from where you are with what you have. I'm Dr. Nicordelai Corte, and this is A More Perfect Union on KBLA Talk 1580. KBLA 1580 Santa Monica. I'm Tyreek Wynn. Alice. The latest on the black. I'm Tyreek Mason. Alice. Former CNN news anchor Don Lemon. Former press news Lon Musk in a new press interview. Lemon was in a new press CNN Wednesday to bring a new recent interview. Wednesday, which in a new Lemon talking to Musk about how a Lemon talk between them for Lemon and talk between on 